I'm Amy. And I'm Audrey. This is the right crowd. So grab a cup of coffee. I love that. Or your cup of tea. Oh, that's a new one. That's from my trip to Disney World. Oh, yeah. I like that one. Or maybe a little something on the rocks. And let's get started. Before we start talking about what we're supposed to be talking about, we wanted to remind you guys that we have 30, what do we have, like 10, 20 of these videos in the can? So a far, lot. a lot of them. A lot, a lot. You missed any. If you're a fan of author craft books, which probably are because you're here, <laughs> you know, make sure to get on our mailing list, our newsletter list, and also tell your other author buddies if they like author craft books to check us out and like and subscribe we're trying to get our subscription numbers and that helps us out with youtube so let's get started all right so what are we talking about today we are talking about the book how to write winning short stories by nancy sakadinsky and i'm sorry miss sakadinsky because i'm not sure how to pronounce your name Could i was like is that how you pronounce it Sakadusky, Sakadusky, Sakadusky. See, I was pronouncing Sakadusky, Sakadusky. Either way, the cool Miss name. Nancy, Miss Nancy, Miss Nancy wrote this book. Miss Nancy, wrote this book. Miss Nancy. and the reason we, so Miss Nancy is the, the owner of Cat and Mouse Press. She's also one of the persons, the founders of a short story contest that happens out there on the East Coast, and she's uh, been a guest editor and writer many things and so this that's the author of this book and the reason i wanted to write this or not write i love to write it the reason i wanted to read this book is because uh i set an intention to write more short stories this year and the reason i want to write more short stories are because you can use them for all sorts of things you can use them as an author for your newsletters you can use them as bonus things on your website you can use things, uh, lost leaders, back books and things like that. But also you can use them to help improve your, your craft, which is why, I, which is one, my, my number one reason I want to, what, I don't want to write them to, to win contests. I mean, I'd love to, but I want to improve my writing and um, I'll take some money. Yeah, I'll take you, but I want to improve my craft. And that's one of the number one things a number of well-known novelists have said is to improve your writing and get faster, get better, write tighter, write more short stories. So that is why I wanted to read it. What about you? Why were you excited to read this book? I actually have a short story collection going where one of the books I want to put out is a collection of my own short stories. So I thought this would be great where it's not necessarily for contests for me, it was, it's more of, I want to write short stories that when people are done with the first short story, they're like, oh my gosh, I have to read the next one. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I have to read the next one. You know what I mean? So that's what appealed to me. But what I, one thing I will say after reading this and going through, there's a lot of stuff in here. Even if you aren't writing short stories, there's a lot of stuff in here that you can use for like regular stories. So I would suggest, even if you're like, yeah, I'm not interested in short stories, still read it. Yes. Put some good stuff in there. There's some good stuff. Yeah. And I would, I was going to suggest that even if you do not, you don't plan to enter contests, you want to write them for yourself or whatever. This book was, I found it, I mean, it's mostly about how to write great short story. That's it. It's got your structure in there. It's got stuff about character building and, and all that stuff. And we'll get to a lot of that as we go through the book. but. I found just because I've purchased books about how to write short stories before, and I found this one to be the most thorough and the most easy to read, easy to, easy to understand about the craft of short stories. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So how do I, how do I do that? Do you know these videos are the only times I do that? I don't, I don't know what I mean. It's the only time I do it. All right. So the Bring first out in me, Audrea. You know, it, it, it's 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 like you're like a cheerleading coach or something. Like, it's going to I don't know why you do it either. It's adorbs. 
Totes and dorms. Oh, okay. 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 So the first part of the book that is basically, if you looked it up in a dictionary, it's like a winning short story, maybe one that wins a contest, literally, or it could be just one that wins publication, not a contest, but it is chosen for publication. So that's your winner. Winning. Or <laughs> charms your readers. Yes. Okay. Winning. Again. For like your newsletters and stuff like that. Stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. So this book, she says, is for writers who would like to produce a story that fits any of these categories. So it's a, it's a general, generally assumed handy reference. And why should we write short stories? Why should we write short stories, Amy? Well, well that's the next chapter. I thought you were I was like, oh, okay. Let's go there. I think the way that she describes it is that it's the way that we as humans told stories and it's just part of who we are. Like even when you're like standing in the grocery line, talking to some random person, you're telling them a short story. It might be micro diction, but you're still telling them a short story. And she explains that for a lot of people, their attention span is only that big. Right. So if you're able to do a whole story micro-sized, then you're, you'll be able to capture those people that someone who writes an epic fantasy can't. Because they just, they, they want short, concise, I have 20 minutes to read something, what can I read? So, so the next part or the next, anything else in this page, she, oh, I, you know what, one of the things I like about the book is in this section, the why short stories and throughout the book, she does have some references or quotes or from other publishers and other mm -hmm. people or judges of writing contests or short story contests. So it's great for those kinds of nuggets of information right from a contest judge get some of that stuff in there and uh she has one from penny senzia berry don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly that's on page 11 short is the new is the new long and there are things coming out now like well when this was published there were kindle singles but now there is kindle bella and there's serial fiction so this is a bit now is the time peeps to start writing short and developing muscle. And I and I do like that um, it's for when someone picks up, like when I publish my short story collection, it'll be for someone who wants to sit down and read a story in one sitting. That's not going to keep them up until five o'clock in the morning. And then they have to go to work. You know what I mean? Like they can pick it up after dinner, read it before bed. And the, well, they probably don't want to read mine before bed, but someone else is before bed. If they're they're gonna my short stories are you know people die, so, but yeah, I I like that. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff in here for when you write longer things, but I like that it's more gear. Is she's helping you condense and get down to the beat of your story instead of all the fluff you put in in a full length. Yes, exactly. So, in in this in this same chapter about why short story, she talks about. Sorry, maybe cut that part out. Okay. So in the same story or same chapter of why short stories, she talks about how people, a lot of people have the wrong interpretation of short stories. And they think that short stories can address themes the way that novels can. And she dispels a lot of that, the wrong, what is the expression for that? She dispels a lot of the myths around short stories that, People who write short stories can't write deep or, you know, intense or because you just don't have the length of a novel to get it done. But actually, people, the best short story writers, you have to do a lot in that's the span of a short story. So if you can do that and hold people's attention and move them and do all that, you're actually a really good writer. Whereas yeah. other people, novelists have all of the space to do all of that all the arcs and things, but you have right. to be really good to do it in that amount of space, which is intriguing. And she has quotes from people like Amy Brown and uh, Alice Monroe, 
I think that one is coming up here. Um, but lots of great sh uh, quotes about from well-known authors about short stories. Anything else in that chapter? Uh, no, that's really good. So the next section, I thought it was interesting. It reminded me of the book we just got finished write, writing. Here I am writing other people's books too. Reading Newsletter Ninja, where she talked about having an avatar, like the person you're writing to. One of the first things she says in her getting started chapter, if you have an idea of whom you're writing for, you will more likely produce a successful, a successful story. And immediately, immediately, I was like, that's Newsletter Ninja. That's exactly what she said to do when you're writing your newsletters. Yeah, and she, especially when you're doing this, if you are doing this for contests, knowing what types of stories they're looking for, not just your genre, but who, if they're doing an anthology, who do they market that anthology towards? They're obviously going to pick stories that are better matches for their intended audience. Right. And, and the other thing is, think about this book is that her chapters are short. Look, so um, that chapter is over. It was literally a page and a half. Yeah. Um, so the, the next part is um, choosing what to write. So I have in the sideline, WC. I have no idea what that is. That's something you want to talk about on the right crowd? Yeah. Which yeah. But I don't know. Nope. You see, I don't, I don't, I don't. If I remember, I'll be like, oh, no. I'll tell you. But right now, I don't know. So well, you can in, do one. Okay. Well, in that same section on choosing what to write, she says one of the best ways to learn how to write better is to read good authors or read short stories of any kind, no matter what the genre. To, you want to study the pacing, you want to study how they do plot, you want to analyze plots and what makes it enjoyable. And she lists some of the best, better known authors like Stephen King, O. Henry, Alice Munro as examples of what, which authors to read. And I, I found that helpful. I highlighted that because I'm always looking for great examples of great short stories. And I remember them from when I was in college or high school, we read these great short stories. But now, I mean, I just remember reading them, but I can't remember which ones they were. They're like okay. two yeah. when I remember. I remember one from, and that's why I can't remember. No, I remember the plot. Like I remember Stone Soup. I remember that was one. I remember um, Shirley Jackson wrote a lot of really good ones. So I remember that name. And, and then I remember one of the best short stories was about baby shoes. But I can't remember. So she gives you some great examples. Uh, contemporary and um, historically the best short story writers. So going back to the part where I did my little wee wee with a WC, it means word count. So this part of the paragraph, oh. she actually explained the different word counts for the different types of short stories. Because there's micro fiction and flash fiction and I can't say my words today fiction. There's all kinds of different levels of short stories. So she goes through at the begin, the very beginning of this part and explains the different word counts that are typical of different types of short stories. And that is, I find that super helpful too, because when you first get in, you don't know how short is short and if it's long as it's still short. And depending on the contest that you are entering, entering, you have to hit that word count. You cannot yeah. go over. If you go over, if it says your story has to be no longer than 2,500 words and you hit 2,501, you're, you're more, more than likely you're out. You've already eliminated yourself. So do not eliminate yourself by writing a wrong word count. A little under might be okay unless they have a minimum, but they always have a max and you don't want to go over that max. No matter how beautiful you think your words are, you are just basically eliminating yourself. Yeah. Go in there and find two words. You can make a contraction. And now you have one word instead of two. Like figure something out. Because mo I, I've never read the rules of any short story contest. 
where going over will not get you immediately eliminated. They, I mean, most of them don't even read it. They'll put it through a word. It goes through a word count. So it's yep. eliminated before it even gets to the judges. They're not going to waste it. That's the other thing is I'm sure somewhere in here she talks about it. I don't remember where. Pay attention to the rules of the contest. If you don't follow them, you are immediately disqualifying yourself. Doesn't matter how bad you could have the right word count. But if they say use this kind of spacing and choose between three, these three fonts and you don't, you're done. No, they do. Sorry. That's the way it is. Go ahead. No, I was done. This is the best part of the video. This is going to be what it is. Yeah, this is going to be. This is just, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. these two awkward chicks show up to both stories. I don't know what I was not to. I'm just not on my game today. I apologize. Peeps. But okay. This will be this will be good fodder for someone to make a funny video meme something out of. You're welcome. Send okay. us your check. Moving cool. right along. Moving right along. Yes. Just in case we cut that bit out. Yes, Amy. The part where she talks about what not to do or reading the rules. There's a section of the book that we'll get to that was uh, common errors for that she mentions about writing short stories for contests. And she talks about word count. She talks about mis misspelling, punctuation issues, and things like that that will disqualify people or not disqualify them, but get them chucked before they move on to the next level of contest. So that's a really great section of this book. All right. So I that, knew it was in there. I just couldn't remember no where. No, I got you. Thank. You. All right, so still in prepare. I'm in preparing to write. Where are you? I am also in preparing to write. Oh, okay. Hey. So I love this uh, section because she gives you some basic stuff about short stories. You don't have, um, on page 21, she talks about you, and I'm using the, my Kindle version with all the highlights and my notes. So that's why I keep looking over there. <laughs> she talks about um, you don't have the space in a short story for multiple major events, it's a small space. So you have to contain your action and conflict for the small space. So, and you also don't have time, which I never thought of. And you don't have time for foreshadowing. I mean, little bits of foreshadowing, but not long drawn out foreshadowing and, and, and things, and not as much room to camouflage clues if you're writing in the mystery or thriller genre. Uh, which is uh, something to think about. And I had not thought about that. Uh, I like, uh, also on page 21, she talks about I, where you can get some of these ideas. Um, and she also talks about, or for short stories and triggers. And one that I highlighted was phrases can trigger story ideas. Um, like just one line. And we, we think of those these days because you and I came from Swap, Stop Writing Alone. Yeah. Nicole. Um, writing prompts, like just phrases like, please don't hurt me, or I've had it with your lies. Could that, that line could go anywhere. And sometimes some of the story contests that you'll come across will give you a theme or they'll give you a line, uh, like one of the ones that we did that we'll talk about later or on another episode. Yeah. Um, the other thing is she, she starts at the very beginning with make sure wherever you're writing, you're writing in a good environment. Right. So before you even start thinking about it, make sure you're not going to be distracted. If you live with other people, maybe you need to leave the house. Even if that means you just get in your car and you drive down the road to the cul-de-sac and sit in the cul-de-sac. Right. But you need to be away from being distracted. We've done a video in the past about multitasking. When you're writing and someone interrupts you, like to get back into that space, you may not be able to get back into that space. Because if you're going like, oh, yes, and you're typing or you're writing or whatever, and someone interrupts you, there it goes out the window. <laughs> you might be able to catch it. But I know I usually can. So just make sure that wherever you're writing is quiet if that's what you need. Mm -hmm. If you need the hustle and bustle of like the sound of a coffee shop, go to a coffee shop. Make sure the chair you're sitting in is comfortable. 
what you've chosen to use to write your story on is medium you want. So whether it's a pad of paper or your laptop, like just make sure it's what works for you. What works for me may not work for Audrea. And what works for Audrea may not work for my husband, Randy, right? Everybody's whatever he, he wants to write. So, you know, it's, I know, but it's just finding what works for you. And if you don't have, because I know writers who don't have the support at home yeah. to do. Yeah. So maybe that means you go into work half an hour early. Then you get some writing done at work when the building's quiet, right? Figure out who was it that was writing on the subway to and from work 10 minutes every day. And I forget the book they wrote. Oh, it was, but oh, it was, but yeah. Oh yeah. There was a famous one that was doing that. Yeah. It was a like, you're like, you wrote that on the subway in 20 minutes, uh, 20 minutes a day. Yeah. Like take, get the time, the time that you find, use it and use it. Quite. You know, that is one of my laments because I live now in the middle Midwest and I drive everywhere, someplace where we don't have public transportation. <laughs> And so I drive everywhere. But when I lived in the city, I lived in Chicago and rode the bus to work or, you know, public transportation. It might be two buses and a, and a, a train or whatever it was. But that's where I got most of my creative writing or thinking done or even just picking up snippets of conversation that turned into stories for me. And now I'm in my car all the time. So I do listen to podcasts and, and books and things like that. But it's like, I want to drive. Now I want a driver. Someone just drive me to work in that 30 minutes. I could use that time. But anywho, but you know, one of the great things I want to talk about with this book is that at the end of every chapter or section, there is a checklist, which is super. Yes. Nice. Yes. So this uh, one, oh, yeah. yeah, the getting started checklist is coming. Up. Yep. And it's at the end of every, you know, guys, we like our checklists. And this one has a workbook, which you'll see in the back of behind Audrea. This one has a workbook. So you can get that as well and work through that. We'll talk about that one in another episode as well. But just so you know, you have you know other options than just this. Like if you're one of those people that need to work it out, you got a workbook. Is there anything else in this chapter you wanted to talk about? I do not have anything else in this chapter. Oh, <laughs> one thing I... I highlighted is obituaries can be an excellent source for character names. Oh, and backstories. Yeah. So you can get ideas from everywhere. Oh, and that's the other thing that she points out in this, this section is it's a short story. Don't overwhelm your readers with lots of explanations. If, if your first run through is all the stuff fabulous because you need to know all that stuff to be able to write the story properly. But when it comes down to it's now ready for a reader, you need to, by that time, have found a way to say it better, shorter. So people who read short stories, like if that's what they like, they don't like a bunch of explanation and extra words. And right, yeah, they do. As little as possible was still getting the point across. Okay, which is an excellent point. And uh, speaking of ex excellent points, the next section or next chapter, the importance of story, takes you through a lot of parts. I don't know how would you describe this section because I was describing this as structure, but there's another whole chapter called structure. This one goes through the beginning, setting up the beginning of your story, what that's like, then central conflict. And the details. So it talks about the whole package, the story package. She talks about what a story is. So it has a problem. Um, there's going to be a narrator. Um, like it has all of the, like it's got to be credible. There's got to be a problem that someone's got to solve. Like they're like, these are all the things that go into a story. And here's all the things that should be going into your story. That's what this first one, one line that I think sums it up is a story has characters, conflict, action, and resolution. It has plot. It nearly always has dialogue. There must be a conflict and emotional effort 
transformation. You do not have a story until something goes wrong. And that whole, this, that whole, this is an, another example about how that whole section, that what you just wrote, read, would apply to a novel as well. It's just mm -hmm. more space to do that in, have less space to do that in for a short story. Yeah, which is why this is an excellent reference, I think. Yeah, I completely agree. One thing, I'm on page 27 that I highlighted, and this is a funny thing. So when I joined Stop Writing Alone with Nicole, and now her last name has gone out of my head. Don't tell her. I'm just she, Rivera, you, you two video boys. going to watch it. I can't believe I'm Henry up for my name. I can just see her face. And I remembered Nicole. I remembered. Yes. Yes. I, I was. Excuse me. I was testing Amy, Nicole. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You can ask this time. But anyway, Nicole <laughs> Romero, Stop Writing Alone Community. You guys were always talking about, and all the other people do this writing contest, and we'll talk about writing contests in the video. But they were always talking about how, you, does your story have a twist? And make sure you have a twist at the end. And I can't think of a twist for the end. And I, since I hadn't written a short story since basically high school, no college. I was thinking, why do you don't need a twist? I mean, what's the big deal about a twist? Just write the beginning and the middle and the end of the story. And then it's a good story. And then you just, you're done. But um, she mentions on, it's on page 21, look for an opportunity to create a twist. And um, throughout this book, she mentions that elsewhere, that one of the keys to writing a winning short story for contests is to have that. Um, yeah. And so I, this was, I won't say it's relevatory because it was relevatory when you guys were talking about it and stop writing alone. I was like, what's the big deal with the fight? But it was, re, it reinforced that concept for me. So if you guys aren't thinking about twists, she talks about it a lot in this book. How to do that. And I love me a good twist. Yeah. And I like how she talks about um, when you are thinking about putting a twist in or for your short story. Uh, that you should know from the beginning what the twist would be and drop tiny hints along the way. Tiny ones, because you're writing short. Um, and a convincing, this is a quote from the book, a convincing yet surprising twist is a wonderful way to end a story. And that's 27. All right, then she goes into the beginning. Beginning. What do you, what do you have there? Or did you know? The section on the beginning. And what my thoughts were, and now I'm trying to remember because I got distracted by sunshine. And oh, if your first few lines don't sing, the writer will never, the reader will never get to the chorus. Oh, I don't know. Like just about every book we have discussed with you guys, they say first line, first sentence, first paragraph, first page, right? First line, first sentence, first paragraph, first page. If you do not hook your reader, a lot of them are going to be like, what is this? What is, how am I turning it? Like, yeah. somebody else want this. Like, they, they won't even. Now, for me, I'll give you a little bit more. But I've gotten to where I don't have a lot of time anymore to read. <laughs> so I'm not giving you too much more time. Yeah. But in a short story, you have got to get them from the beginning. Because you've only got so many words to keep them, their attention. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, and the other thing on the same note. Yes. On the next page, she says to start in the middle of the action. And what she suggests is to write your story and then look at the beginning and see how much of the beginning is it necessary and just start the story in the middle of something. So you don't start with Susie moved to New York and decided it was a bad move. Like that's, that's not like necessarily what you would start it. You could start it with her first night in her apartment in New York. She was awakened by pounding at the door. Right. So you don't like that gives you the idea of maybe New York wasn't the best choice for her. Right. So I like that she, like I hadn't thought about that. Some of these short stories I have going on. For my collection, yeah. a little. That is a great way to do it. That's a great exercise, just to read your things and see where you can cut off some of. Because 
inevitably or inexorably. Easy for me to say. Inexorably? Yeah. <laughs> um, writers will have started with all of this back stuff they think you need to know before you get to the good stuff. And she I'm, says right here, yeah. never start with backstory. Short story. Short story. Next story. <laughs> and uh, one of the things she says is that, and, well, you just said it, the first few sentences of your story determine whether a, a reader will continue to read. That's for a novel or a short story. And I have a book of short stories. And actually, it's a book of, I've been reading a book of flash fiction. I got an anthology of flash fiction. And I find myself, even though they're super short, I'll start reading it. And I'm like, oh, I don't think I want to read that one. And I'll just move on to the next one. And I feel bad. I'm like, these things are so short already. But yeah, you don't get me in that for a couple sentences. I'm going to do it. But yeah, especially if the title isn't very catchy. And then I start reading it and I'm like, yeah, it's not catchy either. I'll go to the next one. Yeah. I mean, which is fine if it's an anthology where you've got multiple writers joining in. But if it's your own collection <laughs> and you've got someone wiping, swiping, kind of like Tinder, they're just swiping, right? If it's just you, it's possible they're not going to keep it. Why are you looking like that? No, I just that reference that that analogy just. It took me a minute to go. Did she just? I did. I did. I did. <laughs> Someone who's been happily married for almost 20 years. Yes, I did. What's the story right there? And I've never been on Tinder, but I've seen enough videos on Instagram where they make fun of it. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Tinder, <laughs> Tinder was way past when I met my husband. Way okay. Okay. And well, you yeah. actually don't want people to pass your story up when you're in a competition because that means you're out yeah competition. yes well, you're exactly. out of the anth anthology or the collection or whatever it is that you're trying to get in so stuff yeah. cool. so that's the beginning and then she and he also the beginning for you because then we go on to the central mm -hmm. and we're not going to go over this whole book like we don't go word for word or, or no but what what struck your fancy in the next section so in the next section it's a central complex section. And so she says to make sure that you create a problem and then you raise those stakes, baby. <laughs> I like it. We just <laughs> did one whole video where we're just doing a whole voice. Every chapter, we should do a different voice. Oh, shit. That would be our, our Our viewers go down instead of up. Oh. That would be some fodder for some funny videos that people want to pull things out of. <laughs> So um, I really like on that very first page that she has a quote from a Jack Bickham. Most short fiction falls into one of three categories. Again, this is something I've heard. But most novels fall into some, well, conflict, stories of conflict, stories of decision, or stories of discovery. And that's a great way to look at it. So when you look at your short fiction, are you writing about conflict? Or are you writing about character? And make characters that make have to make a decision, or um, are you writing about someone discovering something? So that's a great way to look at your how where your fiction is or what you where you lean toward. Yep. Yep. The other thing that they point out in this is that you're going to want to have a discovery in your story. It it when it's when it's a story of decision, there needs to be some sort of discovery there for them. And that it can be small, but whatever that discovery is, it needs to be important to your character. So make sure if it's important to your character that you actually figure out a way to shortly explain why that thing is important to your character. She also mentions that if you want to bump up the tension, put a clock on it. Nothing like a deadline. I mean, I can tell you that in my own personal life. Nothing like a deadline to get stuff done. Tell me about it. Ooh. So, yes. so in this in the book, she goes through in this section the importance of story, the beginning, central conflict, details. What details are important to include in your short story, um, and and why, and then illustration versus explanation, which I thought that was a great section. Contrast yeah. to what to and which one's the most effect, effective or impactful 
And then in the same importance of story section, the she talks about the ending, which has got to grab them. I mean, you had to grab them with the the beginning. You had to hook them, but you got to really, you know, grab their attention, make them sit up, and or make, so your story story is memorable after they get through that end. One thing I want to point out in the illustration versus explanation, she points out that you need to resist the urge for explanation. Show it, don't say it. Right? And that's with a with a novel as well, but so much more in this because less words, short story, less words. Less words. You don't have as much for that. So you already talked about that. You know, and throughout the book, she gives some great examples from short stories, or short fiction or short nonfiction or, not, or nonfiction that illustrate the, the points that she's making. So it's, it's a great, it's great for learning the craft. This, this book. Yeah. Yep. One thing she points out in the ending section is she says that if you're having trouble coming up with an ending, make sure you really have a story. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. So, it, and I think another, she may have said something about this at some point in here, is if you're having a hard time coming up with an ending, maybe a, it, it might be a story. What It may not be a short story. Like, yeah. it might not be the kind of story that can end quickly. Like, it might be need to be something that you save another file for another time. Audrey and I have said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Don't delete it. Don't delete it. Save it for laters. Yes. It can be uh, in another book. It could be another story. It could be something you send as a little carrot to your newsletter peoples. So don't delete. Don't delete. Okay. Anything else? Well, on this section. Just for the ending, what I really like about this book is the tidbits she gives you from other publishers or contest judges. And one of the ones that she gives you is when she talks about the ending, she says, at the other end of the spectrum is the writer who just can't say goodbye. So they keep dragging the story on and on instead mm-hmm. of cutting it with a nice uh, a last line that makes you think or um, something memorable that sticks in your mind. And she says, a telltale sign for me is the contest submission that comes in at 3,499 words when the limit is 3,500. So that was kind of a eye opener for me. It's that these, she says, these writers are probably those who can't say goodbye or they don't, you know, they were right. They didn't know how to cut or they didn't edit cleanly. And they came in right at the, they probably took out or (laughs) Now, what's funny about that is that I read that section the morning after I submitted a story for a short story contest. It was a 900-word limit. It was 900 words. But I have to say that my first run-through was like 1,256 words. And then it was 901. And I went through and found that one word that I could take out instead of breast pocket. It's just a pocket. And now I'm at 900. But I don't know, like, when they're shorter, shorter, shorter stories, I think I'm okay with coming in at the wire. But I think for something that's 3,500, that, that is, to me, that would, that would be blathering on. Yeah. And, well, and you have to read the rest of the book, people. You have to read the whole book to get to why she would say that and how she helps you to not do that, not to blather yeah. on. Yeah, she gives you all the stuff to figure it out. Yeah. Which, and we're not telling you. <laughs> okay. Cool. <clears throat> so one last thing that I wanted to bring up in this one section is I think this is the only part of the book I put a little star. I think. And this is like her closing line for the ending chapter, which I think is kind of cool that it's the one part I highlighted and it's at that chapter, right? She says, winning stories have endings that go beyond the ordinary. Take the time to give your story the ending it deserves. I mean, how many times have you read a short story, a book, watched a movie, and it was fabulous until the end? Yeah. 
I hate that. Like, don't be that person. Right? So admit, don't be that person. She's serious. I'm serious, serious. I feel like, okay, so I've never been drunk. I can't get drunk. I, I can't. It's an enzyme thing. I feel like I'm getting the way you would be if you had had a little, a little bit too much. But I think it's really sleep deprivation. Uh, <laughs> that'll do it. That'll do it. Sleep deprivation. Okay. Uh, so is there anything else you wanted to add, to add Audrey? No. Uh, Amy, I think on that note, that's a great place to end this first part. The how to write writing short stories. It's cool. All right, guys. This is the book. If you haven't gotten it yet, go get it. And check us out next week where we will continue our discussion of how to write winning short stories. Toodles.